fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! <laughs> The sheriff had left his horse and gone ahead on foot. Then he crouched, and a moment later he lay flat on his stomach and inched his way through the tall grass at the edge of an arroyo. His objective was a party of three who were camped there. A couple of inches more and I'll have a drop on him. A couple of inches more. Sheriff Landis could peer down. He saw a masked man and an Indian, but the third man in the camp was partially concealed. Then, much to the lawman's surprise, the masked man spoke. When you get through looking us over, Sheriff, come on in and join us. With it. You needn't be bashful. <laughs> all right, I'm coming with my gun covering all you. I see, Misty. I don't even fool around. It's a gun away, Sheriff. You might get hurt. I might get hurt. Hmm? By thunderation, if anyone is going to get hurt, it won't be me. Who's that critter sitting over there with his back to me? It won't do you any good to know his identity. Hey, Gully, you got the nerve talking that way to the business end of his six again. Well, uh, we've been expecting you, Sheriff. Expecting me, eh? Yes, now calm down. Do Tal and I look like the men you're after? Yes, yeah, you're in their camp. So are you. But I just got here. They're dreaded. Well, if you want the men who held up the stage, you'll find them in an old cabin at the head of the Arroyo. They're waiting for you, and they're tightly roped. Waiting? Roped, you say? Yes. Tonto did the job of roping them. It's well done. You're going to tell I don't savvy you. I want to see that third man. Sorry, but you can't. I'm holding the gun. I can't do what I want. Goodbye, Juniper. All right. My arm. Just jabbed it. Give his gun time. How'd you do that so fast? I was afraid you might get hurt. Put the gun in his holster, Tonto. Let me fix it then. Your arm will be limp for a few minutes, Sheriff. Dead red it, you got no respect at all for a six gun. I might have shot you when you made that move against me. If I thought you were the type of lawman to shoot carelessly, I'd have made a different move. Gee. No, hey, uh, Shabby. Yes? You and the redskin of the gents had talked to the stage driver just after the hole up. Did the stage driver mention us? He sure did. He said you rode a horse that you called Silver. Oh? Now I uh, get it. Hey, golly, you're the lone ranger. <laughs> Door gone. I should have known it when I seen that mask. Uh, now, who's the critter with his back to me? Let me have a look at him. Just a minute. Uh, did the driver of that stage tell you how many men were involved in the holdup? Four men. Four? 
Well, there was three of them waiting in the ambush. And the fourth man was off a ways holding the horses. The three who did the actual hold-up were in the cabin with the loot. The three... Uh... Yes. The man over there is the fourth, but you're not taking him. Mm. You were smart, Henry. Really. Mighty fast, too. But on the other hand, I always had something of a reputation, too. I'm wondering if... Out of my way! Oh, you oh, I'll see him! Too late. Too late. <laughs> Great day. You. Well? You got your look, didn't you, Bob? Chris Johnson. You were a cook. Sorry, you had to find it out. Chris. Oh, Sunday. The masked man tried to keep you from seeing me. You were the best friend I ever had in the world. Yes, that's true. No, I. I got a jail you. Chris, what are you doing with stage robbers? What's happened to you since the last time we were together? Oh, just one thing after another, that's all, Bob. Texas fever cleaned out my cattle. Then Martha died the following fall. Then when I lost my boy in the sheep war, I, I guess I took all my gumption away. It's licked and broke, just didn't give a hang. Chris, why didn't you let me know about your hard luck? It wasn't your problem, Bob. Besides, I didn't know where to find you. You were a good cattleman. You could have got a job. At my age? <laughs> no, Bob, that wasn't in the books. I, I just let the bank take over my land and house and shoved on. Drifted for a while, then found myself camped with some men that had food. Turned out they were outlaws. And you swung in with them. I'd missed a lot of meals, Bob. I was glad to be with men that ate regular. Chris, you gave me the first job I ever had. You took me in when I was a kid so gaunt and spindling that I could hardly cast a shadow. You made a tough hand out of that kid. Now you, you let me see you like this. Uh, I can't believe it, Chris. You a crook, a, a highwayman, maybe a killer. That's putting it a little strong, Bob. Yeah? I never shared in the dirty work of those three. I just cooked to the wrangled horses and ran errands. <laughs> Not that it makes much difference. Hey, I don't know what to do, Chris. I can't let you go free and take in the others. I know you can't, Bob. Uh, for two pins, I'd turn in the badge and forget the whole business. Let three dangerous crooks go free. I know, I know. Oh, that's some duration that ever a man have such a problem. Huh? Well, don't stand there looking at me. You're so all fired smart. Why don't you think of something? I am thinking. Thinking I'm no end of a fool. That's what you're thinking? No, Sheriff. I'm thinking that Toto and I made a mistake. Yeah. Get him up. Hey, what, what the... Toss a rope on him, Toto. Uh, a rope? Let me fix it here. What kind of switch is this? One minute you're all for help me, and the next you pull again in a rope. Gosh, Bob, you I... keep out of this. Get away from me with that rope. Toss the noose, Toto. Uh, take it away. Take it off me. You pay for this. You'll be sorry. Hey, Sandy, you can't treat the law this way and get away with it no matter who you are. Take it easy. Take it easy, Sheriff. We'll leave your friend here to untie you. Oh, that should solve your problem. It won't solve nothing. Oh, this redskin's got me tied so I can hardly breathe. You're doing all right. Todd and I will take care of the three stage robbers. My prisoners? Oh, no, Sheriff. My prisoners. Those three are wanted for another robbery beyond the county line. We'll take them there. Yours and county? They wanted there? Yes. You needn't worry about them. They'll go to jail. Yeah, but... Uh... They'll go to jail in Garson County, where Chris Johnson won't have to accompany them. With the loot? It'll be where I told you. You can pick it up and say the stage robbers got away. They got away because a masked man got the drop on you. All right, bring the horses, Toto. Uh -huh. Well, I'm beginning to serve you. You'll be free to do an important job, then. It important? Yes. What about your friend? Are you going to let him drift again until he ties up with other crooks so he can eat? Girl, I hadn't thought of it. You don't give a man a chance to think. Here. Here, horses. Thanks, Kimo Good luck to you, Chris. Thanks, mister. Thanks, no end. Is that a big foot? Uh, uh, Mon Silver, get him up to scout. In Garson County, the three crooks went on trial. Moose Martin. Guilty. A watery-eyed man called Weeper. Guilty. And a half-breed. Guilty is charged in the indictment. There, that'll hold the three of you. 
How do you like your jail, Moose? Listen, you tin horn. I got friends and influence in this county, and I can lay my hands on cash. I'll be out of this place inside of six months' time, and my pals will be out with me. The Lone Ranger had made a mistake. In taking the outlaws to face charges in Garson County, he had taken them to a community where influence and cash could distort justice and buy early freedom by parole. Just six months after facing the judge and hearing the verdict of guilty, three highwaymen walked out of jail free men. Boys, that hombre we talked to in the jail had the true facts. Yeah? yeah? Chris Johnson's over in Hawkville, just like we heard. And he's working at the bank. The bank? That's right. He's a guard. Sits at the door with a shotgun across his knees, waiting for trouble. We go to jail while he gets a job in a bank? After all we've done for him, that ain't right. Sheriff Landis got him the job. Vouch for him, I guess. I bet mm. the sheriff didn't know that Chris traveled with us. Boys, you know what I think? What? I got a hunch that the sheriff got Chris that job to pay a debt. Huh? What do you mean, Moose? That masked man caught us mighty neat after that stage job. I got a hunch that Chris squealed on us and got a job for doing it. If that is the uh, case. Thunder, Moose, maybe that's it. It's mighty funny that we was marched to Garson County for that old job instead of facing trial for the stage holdup. I figure it was because the sheriff didn't want to involve Johnson. Gee. That sounds like good reasoning, Moose. And one thing is sure. Chris and the sheriff are friendly. And that being the case, we're going to cash in. Now break up camp and get ready to travel. It was evening in the town of Hawksville. Sheriff Landis was at his desk working overtime when the door opened and his old friend walked in. Where the keys? Hey, you look better every time I see you. Sit down, talk. I feel better, Bob. Talk on it. I, I'm getting back to where I can face myself in the shaving mirror without wincing. <laughs> hey, you've been working overtime here. Yep. Today I lugged the payroll money for the mines over from the express office. It was a pretty big responsibility. I, I was mighty proud to be trusted that Under way. Under some case, why shouldn't you be trusted? I remember the day when you could buy and sell any man in this town. Someone has got to carry money. Why shouldn't you be the one? Well, Bob, you know I... I get this straight. You never were crooked. The Lone Ranger saw fit to trust you, didn't he? Well, yes, That's sir. good enough for me. And it's good enough for anyone else. Bob, did you ever tell the bank or anyone else about what's, me? What's it to tell? Well, your past is your own business in a closed book. No one knows about me running with Moose and... We put in the parade. No, there's no reason why they should. Mm -hmm. Bob, there's just one thing. Yeah. What if it comes out that I had a part in that stage holder? Just horse holding. Legally, I was a part of it. If that's known, and it's known that you got me a job after learning about that. Yes. You're going a mighty long way to borrow something to worry about. Just the same. I, I'd feel a lot better if everything was known about me, and I had my job in spite of it. I. I well, hey, what's the matter, Chris? Oh, just a second. I, I thought... I... You thought what? What are you looking at behind me? The window. I... Bob, tell me this. How long do those crooks have to stay in jail over in Garson County? Moose Martin and his pals? Oh, two to five years. Why? Uh, then I, I guess it's all right. I, I was just mistaken, that's all. Mistaken about what? Someone peeked in that window and I, I thought for a minute it was Martin. Moose Martin? No, he's locked up tight in Garson County. What's more, if he ever does come around here, I'll need him for that stage hold up. You can't do that, Bob. You can't arrest him without arresting me along with him. Legally, I'm as much to blame as any of them. Well, don't worry about it. Martin and the others are jugged up plenty tight. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Sheriff Landis thought that Garson County lawmen would hold Moose Martin in jail for many years to come. He scoffed when Chris Johnson thought he saw Moose peering through the window into the sheriff's office. Landis, however, was mistaken. Moose was not in jail, and neither were Breed and Weeper. They'd been turned out on parole and had gone to Hawksville to investigate their former companion, Chris Johnson. Chris wasn't the only one who saw Moose Martin. Tonto also saw him and raced through the night to report to his masked friend, the Lone Ranger. Get him off the scout! Meanwhile, in another camp, three men sat by a low, well-concealed fire. I tell you, boys, I seen the two of them there in the office together. They was downright friendly. Now I'm doggone sure that we were sold out by Chris Johnson. Are we going to yeah. sit still for that? Not by a darn sight. Got any plans, Moose? Yeah, Weeper. I got a plenty of plans. I learned a few things in town. And what I learned will fit right into my plans. What you learn, amigo? This week, Saturday, is the first of the month. And all the men from the mines around here will come into town to turn in their vouchers at the bank and get cash. See? The cash to meet the payroll came in by express today. It's in the bank right now. The bank is fair bulging with so much money. Yeah, I begin to savvy what you got in mind. I want to get that payroll cash and the man that double-crossed us. We'll have the money, and Chris Johnson will have a nice long stretch in the jail. following morning found the three outlaws reining up at a hitch rail across the street from Jonathan Perkins' bank. This'll do first rate, boys. And don't tie your horses. Leave them at ground hitch so we can make a fast getaway. Hey, I see the bank is open. And look, amigo, just inside the door. You see him? Chris Johnson. Big as life and holding a rifle. And keep back a little. Don't let him see us until we're ready. When do we act, senor Moose? In just about two seconds. There's the owner of the bank just... on the job, huh? Yes, sir. Have to be mighty watchful today and tomorrow. Indeed you have. I'm always glad when the first of the month is passed. Stick up your hands! Well, well, stick up and we mean business. Moose and Weeper. Cover those others. Stand still or we shoot. Moose, you can. Shut up. Go on, Weeper. Breed will cover you. Get the cash and don't miss none. I won't. Now watch the door. Stay right where you are, Perkins. This is an outrage. Save it. Well, Chris, so you remember your old pals, huh? Pals? Just like old times, ain't it? Reminds me of the time a few months ago when you helped to stick up the stage from Plainsville. No, no. What's that? What's the trouble, Chris? Didn't you tell your boss that you used to travel with us? You want to be polecats. You'll pay for this. Are these crooks your friends? Boss, I... If you doubt it, Perkins, ask the sheriff. I better take that rifle, Chris. Chris. What are the troubles in your room? cash, Moose. Come on, then. Stop him! Stop him! No more shouting, or my next shots will be closer. Uh, get the horses, boys. I'll cover the getaway, even if Chris don't. You won't get away with this. I'll deal the first man to try to come out that door. Come on, Moose, here's your horse. Uh, this will hold you. <laughs> Mr. Perkins. Oh, so you traveled with those men. But wait, I... Wait, wait for what? Hey, what's the shoot? What's going on here? Hey, what's up? You men, see that Johnson doesn't try to escape. Yes, sir. Here's the sheriff and his deputy. Hey, who's good thing? We came on the run. You. Bob, the bank's been robbed. Who's Martin and his pals? What? It's true. They got away with all the payroll cash. Hey, you there. listen to me, Sheriff Landis. I just learned that this man you recommended was once in league with those outlaws. Hey, Bob, they... You keep they... still, Johnson. Landis, want the truth from you. Did you or did you not know that Johnson had a criminal past? Uh, wait a minute, Perkins. He wasn't a criminal at all. Was he with those men when they robbed the stage in Plainsville? Well, answer me. Yes, he was. Well, that settles it. As mayor of this town, I'll take that badge. There. Here, deputy, for the time being, you will act as sheriff. Now, Mr. Perkins. Do as I tell you, take this badge. Your first duty is to put Chris Johnson in jail. Jail? But you got nothing on him. Hold him for investigation in connection with the Plainsville stagecoach holdup. We'll get to this bank robbery later. Bob Landis, without his badge of office, accompanied Chris as the deputy took him to the jail that adjoined the sheriff's office. Hey, 
It's not what happens to me that bothers me, Bob. It's the idea that you're in trouble up to the neck for trying to help me. Don't talk that way, Chris. I'm not a darn bit sorry for what it did. I do the same all over again. The deputy knows you didn't have a hand in that bank robbery. I hate to do this, Landis. That's all right, Hank. You're just following the orders of the mayor. I got to lock you up, Johnson. And I'll have to form a posse to hunt for the bank robbers. Uh, sure, wish I could help you, Hank, but I expect Perkins won't stand for that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, don't suppose... Wait, 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 what the... Bob, the masked man. Reed, Don't go for the gun, deputy. I'm not a fool. Sheriff, where's your horse? Wait, he's in the barn. Get out of town. Meet me on the south trail. I'm taking Chris with me. Silver can carry us both. Silver? This way, Chris. Hey, hold on. You can't take that prisoner. Well, I have to take him. But you can't. Yeah, hold it, Hank. Well, he's getting away with Johnson. Bob, I can't steady, let him. Steady, steady. You can't stop the Lone Ranger. Carrying Chris Johnson, in addition to the masked man, the mighty Silver threw all of his great strength into a mighty effort to respond to the familiar shout. Come on, Silver! The Lone Ranger traveled in a wide circle until he was sure that there was no pursuit, and he cut back to the south trail where Tonto had met Sheriff Landis. Oh, Silver, oh, oh. Steady, easy, big fella. Chris, from now on, you'll ride with the sheriff. Yes, he here. I don't say I've shouted a few plans to Chris while we travel. He'll explain them to you, Sheriff. It's all right, Bob. My Sandra, I'll lay ten to one. This masked man knows what he's about. All right, Chris. I'm with you to the finish. Dip here behind me. You come with me, Tonto. Uh-huh. Be ready. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Tonto had already marked the direction of the fleeing bank robbers. He and the Lone Ranger started out in that direction. Soon cut to the left of the trail, then urged Scout and Silver to even greater speed. <laughs> Meanwhile, Moose and his companions allowed their horses to drop into an easy lope that could be maintained for several hours. They felt confident that their getaway had been complete and had no thought of capture until Moose suddenly raised his hand and shouted, Rena! Am I seeing things? Look what's on the trail ahead. Uh, Moose, it's the same too. The paint horse and the white one. That masked man, he called us the last time. Of all that downright cussed luck. There they are, ringed up right in the path. We can't go ahead. What are we going to do? We got to shoot it out? No. Head for that canyon to the right. Get in there and we'll be out of sight, then we can give him the slip. Come on. Get up there. Get up, get up, get up. The floor of the canyon was rocky and the pace had to be slowed. Moose rode with his head turned, watching the back trail for signs of pursuit by the masked man and the Indian. Still no sign of them. Uh, Maybe they didn't even know who we were. Could have been just an accident. They were ahead of us, couldn't it, Moose? Yeah, maybe so. They do not follow us. Once we get around the bend in the canyon, we'll be out of sight. Even if those two do ride this way. They find it is just ahead. We'll make the turn and stop and wait. If we're being followed, we'll be able to drop those two from ambush. How you yeah. talking, Moose? I'd sure like to settle a score with that masked hombre. And me. Well, if they come this way, we will settle the score. Now, rain up here. Ho, ho, there, boy. Ho, there, ho, there. Ho, there. I will dismount and wait. Get your guns ready, boys. Hey, right, Sheriff. Hey, keep your hands away from leather. The sheriff. And Chris. Uh, Chris. Save it, Chris. Reba. Just draw that gun real slow and drop it. I'm obeying Chris, but well, you listen, can't. Johnson. We we used to be pals. Used to be. Well, you went against me and robbed a stage. You told me to hold your horses while you just stopped to speak to the driver of that stage. But you Shut up. Your gun now, Moose. Then be fast. What you ordering? Oh, oh, oh. You slow down, Moose. Next time you move sudden, I'll pull my set a little finer. Here's my gun. Your turn, Braid. See, here it is, my gun. Don't show it. Now get down and ride with Moose. I'm borrowing your horse. Pick up the hard wheel, Chris. Then we'll hit for town. <laughs> hey, Fendi, I bet that new appointed sheriff will be surprised. What happened? Yeah, look. Look what's what? coming. It's the bank robbers with their hands high and their holsters empty. Well, it's true. It is the robbers. Hey, that's the sheriff and Chris bringing them in. What? Well, see for yourself, Mr. Perkins. Here, Perkins, look at we got. Landis. Johnson. They got the stolen money with them, Mr. Perkins. You crooks ran up right there. Well, Hank, you'll have to make the arrest. 
I reckon I got no authority now that you win the sheriff's badge. Did you two catch these thieves? Looks that way, don't it, Perkins? I had to make a detour on my way to jail, Mr. Perkins. But now if this new sheriff wants me... Get off those horses. I won't ask questions. Whatever you say, Mr. Mayor. This one, Chris. Why, how did you two overtake these men? Well, you see, we had some help. <laughs> Fact is, we had a lot of help. We just rode hard and then went into a canyon and waited. First thing you know, these polecats back right into us. Mr. Perkins, maybe once in his life, Chris got mixed up with the wrong men. But I reckon he's not the only man that made a mistake. Yes, I guess we've all made mistakes. After all, Chris, today's work is proof enough that you weren't working with these crooks on the robbery my bank. Listen, you, if you jail us for that stage hold up, you gotta jail Johnson along with us. What about that, Sheriff? Who, me? No, not you, Hank. I'm talking to the Sheriff. What about that crook statement? Well, I'll tell you, Perkins. <laughs> I reckon we can jail these galoots for the uh, bank job. After they're done saving 20 years or so for that, well, <clears throat> then maybe we can discuss that stagecoach hold up. <laughs> By that time, if old Chris Johnson does get sent to the pokey, he'll, he'll be willing to settle down. Yeah, uh, now, Hank, you better give me back my badge, eh? Glad to, Bob. Well, I, I still don't understand. You two running down those three hard-riding desperados? <laughs> you couldn't understand that, Perkins. Unless you understood the man that helped us. And you'd never understand him because uh, he wears a mask. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.